Okay, so greetings. Uh, Let us get started with uh, today's class. So, just a quick recap where we uh, stopped yesterday, we are looking at uh, hydraulic brakes. So, in hydraulic brakes, uh, an almost incompressible fluid, right? So, is used as the energy transmitting medium. And uh, this is a broad layout uh, when the driver presses the brake pedal, the brake force is amplified or augmented by the uh, vacuum booster and then transmitted to the master cylinder where the force is converted to a pressure and then like transmitted to the uh, foundation brakes on the wheels. So, in yesterday's class we looked at the vacuum booster, we saw how it uh, works. So, today let us uh, move on and uh, see uh, how the other components work. So, let us get started with the master cylinder. So, what happens in the master cylinder? So, the force that comes from the vacuum booster, okay, essentially is transmitted through this rod and in the master cylinder, we can see that there are two circuits. There is a primary circuit and a secondary circuit as we uh, discussed in the previous class. So, <coughs> we can observe that there is a primary piston and a, a secondary piston. The rod pushes the primary piston. So, the primary piston moves and then closes off this connection to the reservoir. So, you can see that uh, there is a connection to the reservoir, right? That connection is closed. So, once that connection is closed, what we are having is essentially a uh, stretch of fluid, right? So, the mechanical force essentially starts pressurizing the uh, fluid and we can see that the pressurized fluid starts to essentially be given to the uh, uh, brakes on the wheels, right? So, that is what happens. Then what happens? Once the pressure in the primary circuit increases, that is also going to act on the secondary piston and it is going to push the secondary piston, right? This is like a relay race, okay? So, essentially once the uh, fluid in the primary circuit gets pressurized, the secondary piston is displaced and the secondary piston is then closing the connection to the secondary circuit from the reservoir and pressurizes the brake fluid and the brake fluid starts flowing to the corresponding foundation brakes, okay? So, this is how the uh, master cylinder works and of course, the master cylinder uh, uh, proper operation of the master cylinder is very critical because this is the place where we have these uh, mechanical force being um, uh, converted to a fluid pressure, right? So, now what happens if one of the two circuits fail, right? So, here uh, we are, I am just illustrating a case where uh, the secondary circuit, uh, you know, like fails. That means that there is a leak in the secondary circuit. So, what happens is that the primary circuit continues to work whereas, you can see that the fluid is leaking from the secondary circuit. So, at least we have partial uh, braking capacity. Similarly, if there is a leak in the primary circuit, fluid will start leaking from the primary circuit but the secondary circuit will still work to generate enough fluid pressure to brake the vehicle. Obviously, you know like we should not operate the vehicle under such conditions, you know we should. <coughs> Uh, get that, get that, get the what to say system repaired, right? And other mechanisms for us to uh, what to say uh, enable the detection of these failures, we do have, right? So in hydraulic brakes, one of the uh, important advantages that we get is that like there is a good amount of driver feel, right? When you apply the brake, you know like you will have uh, uh, you will get feedback from the uh, master cylinder back to the brake pedal once the fluid is pressurized, right? So, there will be a good amount of pedal feed, right? Feedback that the driver gets. Now, if there is a leak in the circuit, what is going to happen is that we will feel that the pedal has become soft, right? So, people call it as pedal going soft or like brake pedal sinkage and so on, right? So, there is like you try to apply the brake pedal with the same intensity, but then you will see that it gets displaced more, right? So, you will feel that you know like the feedback has reduced and the pedal is sinking more, right? So, that is a uh, perception based feedback that we are getting. And since the amount of uh, brake fluid 
is also finite in a hydraulic brake system. Once the leakage is severe, what is going to happen? This reservoir is going to drain, right? And once the brake fluid starts getting drained from the reservoir at a rapid rate and in this reservoir there are <coughs> levels you know like a maximum level and a uh, minimum level you know like and the nominal level of the brake fluid should be between them right. Once it falls below a certain level you know we get a warning right so that there is some problem in the uh, brake system okay. So that is another uh, what to say uh, mechanism by which we have a feedback to inform the driver that there is an issue with the uh, brake system okay. So one uh, uh, of course we will shortly see what happens in an air brake system right but in hydraulic brakes you know like these two mechanisms there is a perception based feedback and also uh, the uh, fluid level based feedback you know like uh, wa or warning you know like or uh, very uh, uh, critical and handy okay. So this is how the uh, master cylinder works of course I have just explained from a big picture viewpoint like any other component even the master cylinder has uh, what to say very uh, fine components you know like which uh, have to essentially work together even if a, a seal you know in the master cylinder you know does not work properly you know we are going to have insufficient pressure generation right. So we have to uh, produce a manufacture and assemble this master cylinder uh, very carefully okay because the pressures can be very high right. So typical uh, operating pressures in hydraulic brakes are in the range of 10 power 1 to 10 power 2 bar right so that is pretty high okay. So we can immediately observe you know like what is the uh, what to say at least uh, how reliable these components should be right so to enable uh, proper operation okay so that is the master cylinder. Now from the master cylinder you know like going back to this uh, big picture diagram so we can observe that the brake fluid is being uh, transmitted through the so called combination wall we will come to combination wall shortly but to the foundation brakes on the wheels. So we have already seen uh, how the brake fluid acts on the piston in the uh, disc brake and then generates a force actuation force on the brake pad in the disc brake right. Now what, what about the uh, drum brake okay. So in the drum brake the, <coughs> the brake fluid uh, essentially goes and goes into what is called as a wheel cylinder and in the wheel cylinder the uh, fluid pressure is converted to a uh, mechanical force. So what is what is this wheel cylinder? So this is, uh, this is a schematic uh, of a wheel cylinder. So what happens here is that the oil from the master cylinder or brake fluid from the master cylinder <laughs> comes in right it, it goes inside and then we can see that there are two pistons right. So on either side if you recall a, a leading trailing shoe brake right there are, there are two brake shoes and then like we need actuation forces on both end on two ends right. So what happens is that in the wheel cylinder we have two uh, pistons right on either side so the fluid pressure goes and acts on the piston and that generates an actuation force which is going to push this piston and rod and the brake shoes are connected I am just drawing a just an indicative shoe just to not to scale right so to just get the idea right so this is going to essentially generate the uh, actuation uh, force right. So <coughs> essentially we will have uh, the uh, what to say the wheel cylinder having two pistons and that generates the actuation force on the uh, brake shoes of a drum brake in a hydraulic brake system. We will also see when we look at discuss the air brake system as to how the uh, actuation force is generated on the or transmitted to the brake shoes of a drum brake in an air brake system later on okay. So this is the wheel cylinder and uh, we can see that you know like there is a bleeding uh, screw bleeding mechanism because if you want to replace the brake fluid from time to time 
uh, you know like we can do that through this uh, bleeding mechanism okay. So that is the uh, function of a wheel cylinder right okay. So wheel cylinder you know like uh, is pretty compact it fits within the drum brake you know like in a hydraulic brake system and then like it converts the uh, fluid pressure to a uh, mechanical force once again. So in fact if you look at a master cylinder and wheel cylinder you know like essentially the master cylinder it converts the force output from the vacuum booster to you know a fluid pressure right. So that is the uh, uh, primary purpose for a wheel cylinder it converts the fluid pressure to an actuation force on the uh, brake shoes of a drum brake okay. So that is what is the role of a wheel cylinder okay yeah. So now we look at the combination one. So what is this uh, combination wall right. So where was the combination wall located so in a hydraulic brake you know if we go back once again to this uh, broad schematic. So we can see that the combination wall is located in the hydraulic circuit right. So from the between the master cylinder and the uh, foundation brakes okay. So what is this combination wall what is it constituted of and what is its role. So this combination wall is is a combination of various walls as as the name indicates typically found in um, most cars and SUVs and so on with a hydraulic brake system and uh, that are typically equipped with uh, front disc brakes and rear drum brakes. We also discussed why this configuration is very popular right in the previous lecture. So so this is a, a combination wall. So what is uh, what is the what what are the walls that are uh, co um, essentially present in this combination wall? So let's look at them. So the first uh, wall, you know, in this combination wall, is what is called as a uh, proportioning wall. So what is the role of a proportioning wall no. so a proportioning wall ensures that the fluid pressure is appropriately distributed to the front disc brakes and the rear drum brakes so what does this mean so uh, if you recall let's say we take a typical passenger car right and we are looking at the static load distribution on the front and the rear. So let us assume that there is a 60 percent uh, and 40 percent distribution of mass on the front and the rear respectively and when we do braking analysis we will observe that there is going to be a dynamic load transfer from the rear to front during braking. So let us ob uh, what to say assume that for the time being that we want to have 70 percent of the braking effort coming from the front and 30 from the rear. So we want higher brake force output from the front disc brakes right point number 1 correct. So if we want higher brake force assuming that we have the same brake on all the 4 wheels with the same brake, brake factor we would require higher brake actuation force is it not. Higher actuation force is the actuation force at steady state is going to be the product of the pressure in the fluid pressure in the piston or the cylinder right a fluid pressure acting on the piston either in the wheel cylinder or in the disc brake caliper times the area of that piston right. So if I want higher actuation force assuming the same brake I would want more pressure on the front that is point number 1 that is the first reason right. Second reason is that 
we have already ob what to say looked at the fact that a disc brake has lower brake factor than a drum brake. Of course, we are going to design the disc brake appropriately. However, not only do we want higher brake force output from the disc brakes, the brake factor of the disc brake is lower than that of the drum brake, right? That would entail that the disc brakes actuation force be even higher, right? Than the case where the same brake is used on all the four wheels. And once again, how do we increase the actuation force? By increasing the pressure. Of course, that if we can adjust the area in the disc brake also, but you get the point, right? So, relatively there is going to be an increase in the fluid pressure due to these two phenomena. So, a proportioning wall does that. It ensures that the fluid pressure provided <coughs> to the front and rear brakes are proportioned or distributed <coughs> appropriately. Okay, so, that is the role of a proportioning wall. Once again, what are the two reasons? The first reason is more brake force output from the front brake, okay, irrespective of whether we are using disc or drum, right, because more load is there on the front. Right. Second, due to the fact that we are using disc on the front, right. So we know that disc brake requires more actuation force. Right to generate a desired <coughs> brake force. Okay, so that is the <coughs> role of a proportioning wall. So, another mechanism which is typically part of this combination wall is what is called as a pressure differential switch. So, what is this pressure differential switch? So, typically we want the pressure in the primary circuit and the secondary circuit to be almost the same. Now, let us assume that you know like there is a failure in one of the two circuits. See as a driver we want to be alerted right there is a that there is a failure. So, what this pressure differential switch does is to do that function right perform that function. So, what we have in a pressure differential switch you know like the actual design can be slightly different, but the concept is the following. Let us assume that you have a, a structure in which there is a piston at the middle and at either end you have the fluid coming in from the primary and the secondary circuit. During normal operation yes during the transients there may be a small fluctuation, but at steady state the fluid pressure is going to be pretty much the same on same in both the primary and the secondary circuits. So, if that were the case what will happen to the piston it will stay almost in the middle right of the cylinder. Now, assume that one of the two circuits has failed what is going to happen the pressure on that side is going to fall down. So, when the brake is applied there is going to be a pressure difference on either side of this piston. So, the piston will move and then it will essentially hit the cylinder on one side and that will close an electric circuit which will give a warning to the driver. No? That is a typical concept behind the realization of this pressure differential switch. So, it, it is monitoring the difference in pressure right between the two circuits that is the role of the pressure differential switch. So, the pressure differential switch is used to uh, alert the driver if 
there is a loss of pressure in either circuit. Right, either the primary or the secondary circuit. That is the role of the pressure differential switch. So, in the combination wall, typically there is another, in, another wall called as metering wall. So, what is this metering wall? So, once again, you know, like we are discussing a, a, a essentially a configuration where we have disc brakes on the front and drum brakes on the rear, right. So, typically uh, these drum brakes take a little bit longer to apply than the disc brakes ok. So, once fluid is provided to it right. So, the construction of the drum brake is such that it takes a little bit longer to apply than the disc brake. So, ideally we would want all the four brakes to be applied at the near about the same time right. So, we do not want a differential there right. So, the metering wall does that job. So, it just delays providing the fluid to the disc brake by a calibrated time interval, very small time interval, so that all the four brakes are applied at the same time. Okay, so that's the de definition, uh, role of that's a role of a uh, metering wall. So the drum brakes take slightly longer. To be applied than disc brakes. So, this wall, the metering wall, delays providing brake pressure to the front disc brakes <coughs> thereby providing sufficient time to apply the rear drum brakes. So, that is the role of a metering wall. So, these are the constituents of a typical combination wall. 